What's up guys? We are on to the fifth shelf of my wrestling collection. Uh, the first one here doesn't have the cover art. Uh, this is SummerSlam 1997. Uh, this, in, in my opinion, is where the WWF started to turn things around. Uh, the main event with uh, Bret Hart versus The Undertaker with Shawn Michaels as the referee was a classic. You know, you had multiple storylines going on in the same match, which at the time was you know, way different than normal. Then you had uh, the Mick Foley or Mankind versus Triple H match that opened the show, which was one of the better cage matches that you've seen in a while, very violent. And then of course you had the Stone Cold Steve Austin neck injury pile driver with Owen Hart, but it was a great match up until that point. So a lot of really memorable matches happened on this pay-per-view. Uh, if you have not seen it, I definitely recommend that you watch it. The next one doesn't have cover art either. This is Bad Blood 1997. Uh, this is where they had the uh, Hell in a Cell match. Uh, Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. And, uh, you know, compared to other Hell in a Cell matches, I only thought it was okay. I know that because it was the first of its kind, everyone says it's like, oh, it's the best one ever. In my opinion, the best one was The Undertaker versus Mankind at King of the Ring in 1998. But still, you know, it was a solid match, entertaining. You know, the debut of Kane was probably the biggest thing that happened at this pay-per-view. Uh, other than that, there wasn't really a whole lot of memorable matches at this. You know, it was the finals of the Intercontinental uh, Tournament where Owen Hart won the belt because Stone Cold was, uh, was injured. But Stone Cold was at ringside doing commentary for it. But still, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely worth a watch. Uh, next, we have the Ground Zero pay-per-view. Uh, I've never seen this, to be honest. Uh, so, I, you know, I can't really critique it at all. Very hard video to find. Was very expensive on eBay to get. You know, a lot of these older videos are. But yeah, you have The Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels again. Yep, then you got, like, uh... Oh, this is the, you know, the nation broke up, so it's Farouk, Savio Vega, and Crush. Uh, Goldust and Brian Pillman, you know, this was, uh, this was right before Brian Pillman died. I actually think that I have this in the wrong order because, uh, this happened, uh, before Bad Blood because Brian Pillman died, uh, right before, uh, Bad Blood was announced on the pay-per-view. You know that tag team match uh that looks kind of average i mean it was a good way to keep you know keep stone told on television with his neck injury and not have him have to be in the ring a whole lot so it makes sense and then you know bret hart versus the patriot makes sense you know america versus canada so yeah you know i'm looking forward to watching this leave comments down below if you've seen this and what you think of this Uh, next, we have One Night Stand, which was the pay-per-view from uh, England. Uh, this was, you know, the production quality, obviously, because this was like their first pay-per-view in England, as far as, you know, the late 90s go. So the video quality, it was dark. It wasn't as well lit. The entrances weren't as, you know, big as they are in the United States. Uh, again, you know, British Bulldog versus Shawn Michaels, I don't think they work well together. You know, so the match wasn't very good. You know, and of course he's defending the European title. You have Shawn Michaels versus British Bulldog for the European belt. Average match. Vader versus Owen Hart. Average. Legion of Doom versus the Godwins. Not good. I This is when Legion of Doom was starting to go downhill as far as what they could do in the ring, in my opinion. Uh, Dude Love versus Hunter Hearst Helmsley. You know, they're just, they're keeping their feud going from SummerSlam only now instead of being Mankind, he's Dude Love. And then uh, the head uh, Headbangers and the Los Bariquas, you know, they were, they, their tag team division wasn't very deep at this point. 
So all in all, only an average pay-per-view. Uh, next we have Survivor Series 1997. Famous obviously for the uh, Montreal screw job. You know, the otherwise, you know, the match was good up until the very end, obviously, where all that happened. But otherwise, all the matches before that match, in my opinion, were not good at all. This pay-per-view was kind of disappointing to me. It's a hard three hours to watch, for me at least. Uh, then next we have Royal Rumble 1998. Now this is when the WWF really, really got enjoyable for me. From like 1998 until probably into 2008, it was like every pay-per-view was almost worth watching. Uh, this is one of my, uh, I'd say probably top 10 Royal Rumble matches to watch because, you know, just a lot of big names in there to where, you know, you kind of believed. I mean, you kind of knew Stone Cold was going to win it, but you could have believed that, oh, The Rock might win it or someone else. Plus, you had, you know, Mick Foley entering in all three of his personas in this Royal Rumble match, which was a nice twist and funny event. Uh, you know, this was back when they were still trying to push the minis wrestling, which, you know, was a waste of time, in my opinion. It wasn't entertaining at all to me. And then you was like, you had the Royal Rumble match. Uh, Rocky, my, you know, The Rock versus Ken Shamrock was an okay match. I'm not a huge Ken Shamrock fan. I think he's, you know, obviously a great MMA fighter, but I don't think it really translated to the ring. The Rock did what he could with Ken Shamrock. So all in all, that was average. Vader versus uh, Goldust was actually a pretty entertaining match. You know, I don't think the WWE used Vader very well. WCW used him very well. But he was just kind of a disappointment when he came to the WWE. Probably because they weren't used to the stiff style that Vader is known to work. Uh, the New Age Outlaws versus the Legion of Doom. Uh, that was actually a really great match. Uh... This is when the New Age Outlaws were starting to come into their own and they really made the Legion of Doom look good. And then Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker, of course, was a classic in a casket match. This is where Shawn Michaels hurt his back and ended up having to, you know, pretty much retire for five or six years after WrestleMania. But all in all, it was a great match between wrestlers that were just there to, to show what they could do. Great pay-per-view, though. If you have not seen this, you have to see this. Next, we have No Way Out, uh, 1998. Uh, I've only seen this once, and it was a long time ago, so I don't remember a whole lot about it. I do remember that there was a lot of injuries to where they had to make a lot of substitutions on the card, which made this pay-per-view kind of forgettable. Yeah, you had the eight-man ma eight uh, unsanctioned tag team match, where you just had a random assortment of people just kind of thrown together. It was Savio Vega, I forgot who he was thrown in there for. He wasn't originally supposed to be in that match. And I forgot who he replaced. Vader versus Kane was their first, you know, kind of foray into a storyline with Kane, trying to make him into a dominant force to work him up, to build him up for, to face his brother at WrestleMania. You know, then you got the War of Attrition match. You know, that was more of their uh, gang warfare type of stuff. You know, and they, you know, again, they threw just random people in there versus the nation. You know, Ken Shamrock. You know, at this point, I believe Crush had left for WCW but hadn't debuted yet. I could be wrong, though. You know, and Headbangers versus Goldust and Mark Merrow set up their WrestleMania storyline. Takamichi Noku and Pantera, they were trying to do a light uh, cruiserweight division and it didn't work because they didn't really invest as much into the characters or make it into a big deal. They kind of made it feel like, a, oh, it's a bathroom break match. I don't know what was going on with the NWA title matches and why they were here. And then the Quebecers versus the, you know, the Godwins. I mean, you know, the Quebecers have been done for a while. Why they were still here is beyond me. All in all, an average pay-per-view. And again, another hard VHS to find as well. Then, of course, next we have WrestleMania 14. 
Uh, probably one of the better WrestleManias up, well, up to this point, it would probably be the best WrestleMania. You know, Austin versus Michaels with Tyson as the enforcer. You know, classic match, crowning a Stone Cold Steve Austin. The crowd was just super into this match too. You know, the, the hype and the press for this WrestleMania too was probably the highest I'd ever seen. And I was just a kid at the time, so I didn't see all the print media and stuff like that. But just like them talking about it on the news was insane. Now, this doesn't really show any of the matches on the back, but of course you had The Undertaker versus Kane that happened, and that was good. The entrances for that were amazing. The match was okay. You know, Triple H versus Owen Hart was okay. You had The Rock versus Ken Shamrock here. One of the better matches of this pay-per-view was uh, The New Age Outlaws versus uh, Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie in a dumpster match, which went all over the arena, which at the time was way different than what you were used to seeing. Very, very entertaining match. So, if, you know, this is a WrestleMania that if you have, you know, if you're watching WrestleMania for the first time, watch this one. Next, we have Unforgiven 1998. Uh, this is when they actually started using, you know, names for their In Your House pay-per-views instead of just calling it In Your House. Uh, this was a this was a pretty good one. This was the first pay per view of Stone Cold's era. You know, you had the uh, Stone Cold versus Do Love. You know, they needed someone for Stone Cold to kind of squash, but Vince McMahon to get behind. Them. They're trying to build up their roster, I'm sure, with WCW being so loaded. You had the Undertaker versus Kane in an Inferno match, which was actually really good considering it was the first one they had had. Uh, Triple H versus Owen Hart again, you know, average match. Evening gown match, you know, not very good. I'm not a huge Sable fan. Uh, New Age Outlaws versus LOD 2000. You know, at the time, they were trying to make the New Age Outlaws out to be the heels. But they were just so popular that, you know, they eventually obviously had to turn them faces. And LOD 2000, they were trying to make faces, but fans were kind of over them. They added Sonny as their manager, but it didn't really help much. You know, but otherwise, you know, the undercard of this pay-per-view wasn't fantastic, but the two top matches were top of the line. Definitely worth checking out. Then you have Over the Edge, uh, 1998. Uh, again, solid pay-per-view. Undercards were average. You had Kane versus Vader, you know, for the last time. Uh, then you had, uh, you know, Stone Cold versus Dude Love again, only this time McMahon's trying to stack the deck. You know, he's got, you know, himself as the referee. He's got Pat, you know, Pat Patterson, Jerry Briscoe, and Sergeant Slaughter doing various things around the ring as well. So, I mean, but still, you know, it was from Milwaukee. So that's a plus. But, uh, yeah, it was a good pay-per-view. It was better than Unforgiven, in my opinion. Uh, then we have King of the Ring 1998. Uh, this pay-per-view in general was kind of boring. The two matches that made this pay-per-view memorable were Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Kane in a first blood match, and then Mick Foley versus The Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell. And this is the Hell in a Cell, that if you have not seen a Hell in a Cell match, or you have, but you haven't seen this one, this is the one that made Hell in a Cell into a big deal. Now it's kind of overplayed. You know, th back then they made it to where it was like you were getting carried out of this match. You weren't making out of this match in one piece. And now they just walk out unscathed, no blood, nothing. Then they have like, you know, 10 of them a year, which is ridiculous. You know, back then they used it very properly, built it up, made it very violent, very believable. And I, I they've lost touch with that, it seems, lately. But yeah, here you go, here's the card. You know, Dan Severn, again, just like Ken Shamrock was, he didn't do anything for me in the WWE. You know, New Age Outlaws versus the Midnight Express, you know, they were just grasping for tag teams for New Age Outlaws to face. I did like the Al Snow and head match versus too much. You know, when they put the head and shoulders on head so that way they could pin him. With Jerry Lawler as the referee, absolutely hysterical match. Uh, X-Pac versus Owen Hart, average. 
headbangers and Taka Michinoku versus Kai and Tai was horrible. But uh, definitely check this mat, this pay per view out just for you know Stone Cold versus Kane, Undertaker versus Mankind, and I'd say Alice No One Head versus Too Much made this pay per view worth watching. And then lastly, we have Fully Loaded 1998. Uh, this this was a good pay per view. You know, you had the bikini contest, which is known for obviously with Sable taking her top off or whatever, and then you. The matches that stood out though, Stone Cold and The Undertaker versus uh, Mankind and Kane for the tag team titles when The Undertaker was going to be facing Stone Cold at SummerSlam for the WWF title was an interesting twist. And then the match right under it, Triple H versus The Rock, obviously a classic because these two work very well together. And this was like their first kind of foray into really working well together. They had a best two out of three falls match. And it was a classic. Definitely have to check that one out. But uh, yeah, that does it for uh, this shelf of uh, the wrestling collection. I uh, look forward to uh, talking to you next time.